And I think she even tweeted at Dave Rubin to get on his show because she was being canceled. Probably not the word that she used by by leftists who are woke or something like that. And now if you look at her page, you can see that she has joined, uh, I believe, Rumble and Locals, which is Dave Rubin's platform. And all of her timeline, it's just nothing but anti-vaccine nonsense. And it looks like a typical... By the way, I've been waiting over a year to get onto Locals. What the f***? Yeah, debate Sam Cedar, you coward, dot locals dot com. Still coming soon. What the f*** is this 1984 bullshit? Dave, come on. I got high level ideas, Dave. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in, Dave. Uh, okay, uh, Mike apparently is getting called out by someone in the hill today. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny. I guess this is this is technically drama, but yeah, it's it's the hill versus uh, Mike Figueredo. Kim Iverson was once a promising new voice in independent media a couple of years ago for like two weeks until she very quickly <laughs> decided to take a sharp turn towards more react. <laughs> Whew, the shade, the shade. I like it. I like when Mike's spicy. Missionary <laughs> oriented politics, but now she's a co-host on the Hills Rising program. And over the weekend, a clip of her on this show blew up. And as you're going to see, it blew up for very good reason. Now, I probably wouldn't have watched this clip all the way through had I not seen the responses beforehand, because she is seemingly building up to a very solid point that's agreeable. Even if overall you don't necessarily agree with Kim Iverson's politics, what she is presumably going to say here hey, what up, makes good a to lot see of you. sense. Uh, but she's going to take a very, go very huge channel. turn in an entirely different direction. And this is a plot twist that nobody expected, I don't think. And this has got to be the hottest take of 2021, even blowing out people like Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder. So as Twitter user Skeptical Spice, who shared the clip, points out, I promise you don't know where this is going. OK, uh, I, I, I am going to play this. Uh, allow me to change the title. Uh, humanist Report Shade. Oh, I'll just put Shade Report. Yeah, there we go. The humanist shade report. That feels like it's better. But uh, can I just say, by the way, that it has been so weird, so weird to see all the U.S. press posting like five year old photos. Like, why not? Why not show the ultrasound? Did you get the ultrasound? We should see like then we can truly understand the raw innocence of the white fetus if we see it in that form. Like why why is every picture of this individual so goddamn young? I mean, I know that they're already young uh, as is. They're like 15 years old, but still. So watch it till the very end and then you're going to see why this blew up. Look at the photos of Ethan Crumbly people on social media and some media outlets are using. He's now 15 and yet they chose this angelic looking photo from about when he was 10. What is the purpose of this when there are several other photos like his mugshot that could have been shown instead? This same sort of tactic is used in reverse against black perpetrators and even victims. Rather than use their school photo of them smiling and looking like good kids, they use the meanest looking, most aggressive photo they can find on social media True. to portray them as villains. They True. attempt to portray them as people who either obviously would commit the heinous crime they did or victims who deserved it. They do this to placate a certain bias and mindset that the audience already holds. And the same looks to be happening in this case. Showing Crumbly as this innocent looking angelic white kid is intended to stoke fear and support a narrative that white people, no matter how nice they look, are domestic terrorists who should who we should all be afraid of. I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> that <plot was> that's, <laughs> that's what it was. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> I saw I saw so many people sharing that clip and then I was just like, ah, I don't really wanna like watch uh, more analysis of the shooting. It's like I've seen enough of it already. Wow. Yeah, that is oh yeah, that's oh no, that's that's M Night Shyamalan levels of a of a twist at the very end. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. No. That's why. That's that's why. Fucking whew. Oh my. Nice. Twist would give M Night Shyamalan a run for his money. That was certainly that was something. Wow. It, it sounds like something that the diversity equals white genocide people would say. It's just bizarre. I don't think that she has anything to worry about if her concern is this new wave of racism and negative stereotypes against white people. I don't think that that is going to happen considering most of the country is white. So I don't think this is going to be the start of a trend towards racism against white people. And she thinks that if you see that picture of a young angelic Ethan Crumbly, you're going to think, wow, you know, if white people as innocent looking as that can be terrorists, then I should be afraid of all white people. But that's not the conclusion that most people are going to come to. No. When people see that picture of a young, angelic Ethan Crumbly, to use her mm -hmm. word, 
they're not going to think, wow, I should be afraid of all white people. That's going to humanize the terrorist. They're going yes, that's that's why they're doing it. They're, they're definitely not trying to make you more afraid of white people. They're trying to remind you that there is, of course, the innocence of youth at all times. And we must look upon these angelic photos and, and truly understand. Going oh to see their son or their nephew in Ethan Crumbly. I just don't think that she really thought this through. Now, I've got to share the responses because the responses got Kim Iverson's attention and she responded and she was coping very hard. So Anna Kasparian tweeted, what the fuck? John Iderola also said, how? Just how? Jeff Waldorf pointed out, wow, that twist at the end is something. Now, oh, I have a, a new update to the story. I ended up uh, ratioing Kim over uh, her comments on this. So she uh, she tweeted out today. I'm loving how triggered establishment progressives are over my Michigan shooter segment. I have zero ideas why that would be so incendiary to them. Must have hit a sore spot. A, at Humanist Report, at TYT. Not sure why TYT was in there too, but sure. And they can't even explain coherently why they are so incensed by my take. All they can do is call me dumb. Honestly, I'm flattered. I've joined the ranks of Glenn Greenwald, Max Blumenthal, Jimmy Dore, and Aaron Maté in being smeared on TYT. I'm just hoping Anna Kasparian would give me a good old-fashioned fuck you, Kim Iverson. Maybe next time, eh? Uh, and then I wrote, calling a YouTuber the establishment while you broadcast on the hill is like Tucker Carlson blaming everything on the elites while he cashes in his Swanson checks. And nice. I'm glad. That's a, I, I'm proud of this ratio. That's, a, that's an effective ratio there. This got thousands and thousands of shares online. And Kim Iverson decided to address the haters, saying liberal outlets like DYT and MSNBC have spent the better part of the past five years telling people Christian white men are our nation's biggest threat, <laughs> that people like Keith Olbermann and Anna Kasparian can't understand my conclusion on this. And then she responds to Anna Kasparian, the photo used for the shooter is meant to support the narrative you've created in people's minds. Christian white males are terrorists, no matter how angelic they look. Right. We understand the point that you're trying to make. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a weird one. It's utterly bizarre. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 as if you've just got this completely. Uh, it's like the upside down. Like your your views of the world are the upside down, and then you're kind of like, wow, why doesn't everyone else see it the same way I do? At least I'm proudly joining the ranks of fucking Max Blumenthal and Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté. Okay, May, you don't have to reiterate it. We're telling you that the point that you're making is stupid, and we don't agree with it. In fact, it's such a bad take that the entire internet is laughing at you. So uh, I want to play a second. What? No. Oh, no. They're taking it down. This was the only good one. The Nathan Bedford Forest statue along the I-65 is in the process of being removed this morning. The owner of the installation and the land on it died last year, and the executor of it uh, ordered it to be taken down. This was the only good Confederate. It's that big? Jesus. I had no idea it was that monstrous. Aw. But again, it's the only good Confederate statue because it's it's just so it's like it looks like, you know, when taxidermy gone wrong kind of thing. It's it's just such a horrifying beast. I think it I think it does teach a lesson. I think I think people can point to it and be like, don't ever become like these monsters. <laughs> I'm sorry, the horse has done nothing wrong clip here because she goes on to kind of further explain her reasoning here just to be fair to her um and then i'll respond when we come back i think this is going to be another case kind of like kyle rittenhouse where now look this guy's guilty i think it's really obvious from all the evidence that we're seeing that this guy was is very very guilty very different than the kyle rittenhouse case as far as the actual facts but how they'll use it to fuel a narrative or a discussion or to demonize others this isn't about ethan crumbly uh whether or not people want to call him a terrorist that has nothing to do with him it really has to do with this narrative that we're facing this white domestic terrorism in this country <laughs> Uh, I feel like uh, a new faux outrage is dropping, right? Like, it, it's... I know that you, there's this narrative that white people really, really want to be oppressed in, in the United States, especially conservatives. They're just, like, they're dying to be oppressed. That's why they make up fake wars, like the war on Christmas, for example. Uh, but this is going to be a new one. It's that, like, we have to fight this deeply entrenched and ingrained problem that we have in society where we view all white people as potential terrorists, as potential terrorist threats. And we just, we haven't been able to shake that. This is our big problem, and we've got to do something to stop it. And that stopping it has nothing to do with Ethan Crumbly. It will affect other people. And that is what I'm most afraid of on this. So ultimately, she doesn't like that it supports the narrative that white domestic terrorists are the biggest problem. Now, sure, I can understand why you would... Can I start a conspiracy theory that you've been drugging Chico to sleep this much? It's great. He, like, he knocks out for, uh, I'd say, almost three and a half hours of the stream if I, like, time his walk right before. So right before I stream. And if you're ever like, why is Lance so late? It's because, like, I'm, I'm, like, taking him to dog parks or just walking around town trying to get him some exercise. He gets 
back. He has himself a little nom, a little nom nom, and then just like knocks out. It's like it also it, it'll stand on you. Dogs sleep for like eighteen hours of the day. They they spend the vast majority of their lives sleeping. They they love sleeping. It's like it's totally their thing. Would be concerned with this because perhaps this might lead to more NSA spying or crackdown on civil yeah, liberties. More too. broadly speaking, if this is a narrative that's pushed, since white people make up the majority of the population still. But overall, I don't think that that's the full point that she's making. Maybe that's a part of it. But ultimately, it seems like she's more concerned with the demonization of white people. But the problem with her argument is that even if she doesn't like this narrative that white domestic terrorism is our biggest problem, I mean, when it comes to terrorism, it's a fact that white domestic terrorists do account for most terror attacks in the United States. But the reason why people point that out isn't to demonize white people unnecessarily. It's to suggest maybe we shouldn't demonize others. Maybe we shouldn't demonize Muslims. Yes. OK, thank you. If he wasn't going to say it, I was right. I mean, I can't I can't really do the Professor Eeks thing for too long. Uh, with Mike on this one, but absolutely. Also, by the way, uh, I, I know people don't like lectures about, uh, you know, uh, sociology, white supremacy, how it actually works, um, but there has been actual studies, I think it was Harvard who did the study, where they were showing a whole bunch of different people images, uh, both of uh, black Americans, white Americans, indigenous Americans, and they would ask them, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things, word association, what came to mind when you would see them uh, in a variety of things, and it didn't matter if they were white or black, they still had more negative responses to say based on seeing black Americans versus white Americans because of how deeply entrenched so much of, uh, you know, systemic racism, institutional racism is codified within society itself. So a lot of the stereotypes that people start to believe, right, that maybe certain people are going to be more predisposed towards crime. You'll often hear that argument being told to you by race realists, right? Well, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, they make up 13% of the population, but they're responsible for 50% of violent murder. So clearly that means that they are predisposed towards committing those violent murders. So say, you know, the race realist. Um, but it's, it's, it's wild how people don't recognize how much that is actually embedded within the very way they think this goes across the board it goes all the way to beauty standards it goes towards people who are dating on dating apps it goes towards what is considered to be beautiful angelic pure creamy white pristine snow mayonnaise you know like all the way on up and people never think about this kind of shit it's why like i try to tell people uh especially if they figure out that like you know if i've explained to them that i'm multiracial that i don't actually suffer from any of the problems that most people who are like outwardly visibly uh not white do uh, like you know like indigenous people for example in canada get followed around all the time when they go into supermarkets into stores uh if they go into like a shopper's drug mart or a safeway it doesn't matter the security guard will just distinctly follow them around because it's like well yeah i mean you know he's native he's gonna steal something they always do i mean it's just like what they're predisposed to do but you just never think about that she's trying to flip this whole thing on its head now she's trying to say that like well it looks like society is starting to like really codify in everyone's idea that white people are all domestic terrorists it's like no 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 that that's not the way society views white people at all and we're just trying to make you realize that for years as we vilified people who were brown people who uh were uh either uh muslim or even if they were sikh it didn't matter because people just had blinders on for example when it came to this especially uh, after 9 11 we consistently vilified them as being terrorists actually fuck that's not even an old thing it's being done today right now by uh, lauren bobert uh and ilhan omar uh where she's like oh yeah she's part of the jihad squad it's fucking hilarious i got dad jokes coming out of the you know drunk old uncle jokes uh, um, racist fucking bullshit where they're saying like yeah the, because this person happens to be not white uh, this person is most likely going to be uh, a terrorist threat uh, on a plane like that that was a reality that every single person who again happened to have a, a brown complexion had to start dealing with and like if you want anecdote Andy I've said this story before Dave the other person who does YouTube videos with me who is Indian uh, who is Sikh uh, every single time the two of us would cross through the border together, he would be stopped or fly if we would fly. If we were flying into the United States, he would be picked out of the group. It was like us, uh, even if we went with like, it would be me, uh, another friend. Uh, one of them happens to be, uh, you know, Korean. And then he happened to be uh, Indian. He would be the person who would always be selected, taken out of the group and been like, oh, random security check. And we'd always be like, yeah, random fucking random security check because of these stereotypes that get perpetuated. Muslims or other perceived domestic terror threats. In Europe, Romani people, right should, uh, in Romani America people, is the yeah. ones who are increasingly radicalized. They're increasingly the ones doing the most violence in the United States. Therefore, rather than demonizing other races and scapegoating them, maybe we should be introspective and look within and figure out who the biggest threats are if we're going to demonize anyone. <laughs> Saying that as a white person does not make me <laughs> racist against white people. To think that is deeply unserious and stupid. But this isn't the first time <laughs> that Kim Iverson had a very hot take. <laughs> 
I really, I love fucking <laughs> shady Mike, salty Mike. Fuck, let the let the spice flow. This is great. I guess you could say when it comes to race issues, because as Twitter user Escover points out, in 2019, Kim Iverson tweeted that the USA is one of the least racist countries and that racism is a distraction from the real issues. Now, I believe that's when she was just starting out on YouTube. And the second she got pushed back, that's immediately when she began her pivot towards Dave Rubinism. And I think she even tweeted at Dave Rubin to get on his show because she was being canceled. Probably not the word that she used by, by leftists who are woke or something like that. And now if you look at her page, you can see that she has joined, uh, I believe, Rumble and Locals, which is Dave Rubin's platform. And all of her timeline, it's just nothing but anti-vaccine nonsense. And it looks like a typical... By the way, I've been waiting over a year to get onto Locals. What the fuck? Yeah, debate Sam Cedar, you coward, locals.com. Still coming soon. What the fuck is this 1984 bullshit? Dave, come on. I got high level ideas, Dave. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in, Dave. Typical right wing reactionaries Twitter timeline. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's really sad. I was hoping that at some point Kim Iverson would come to her senses and she would maybe be a little bit more nuanced in her thinking and stop thinking in such a sloppy, um, reactionary way. But this take is, uh, it's. Yeah, it's an indication that she's... This is spicy, calling someone stupid, kind of a low bar. Uh, this is spicy for Mike, okay? Mike typically just reports on, uh, you know, events, the news, leftist shit, talking Bernie Sanders kind of stuff. Uh, doesn't usually have these little feuds. Uh, and this is, again, it's kind of a funny feud too, because I, I love how she's framing it as if, like, Mike happens to be part of, like, the establishment media. Like, this is a fucking independent YouTube channel. He's His, his editorial staff is right here. I mean, he's beholden to, to this. <laughs> it's not changing anytime soon. She's still pandering to radicals uh, on the right. Now, if you're wondering why so many people take this Dave Rubin trajectory and they start out as a progressive and then they pivot towards more right wing reactionary politics, it's because that's where the money's at. Perhaps people are just genuinely reactionary. I'm not saying that Kim Iverson doesn't believe the thing that she's saying, joke, although I, I hope snubbed. she doesn't because oh, there's time. Stupid. Uh, but this is how you get the biggest audience. You pander to people on the right and also left adjacent people who are anti-establishment, but maybe sucked into some elements of reactionary politics. And that's how you grow your audience. That's how you get more popular. You know, it's more lucrative to pander to people on the far right and some people marginally on the left than it is to just pander to right-wingers or left-wingers. So this is why you see a lot of people who are ideologically incoherent, like, you know, Joe Rogan, like uh, now Jimmy Dore <laughs> is one of them, Dave Rubin, except now he's a full right-winger. But this is why you see people making the shift. It's because that's where the money's at. That's where the audience is at. True. All true. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's paying off for Kim Iverson because she now has a gig at the Hill. But I mean, if she's going to drop takes like this more frequently, I'm going to have to tune in because Jesus Christ, that was uh, entertaining, albeit for the saddest reason possible. But it was entertaining nonetheless. Fun, funny stuff. That's a funny feud. I'm, I'm excited for it. This will come down to who can deliver the lower propensity yeah. and mid propensity voters. Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we will build a ladder to heaven to deliver you the daily news. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your most humble of clownish jesters. To our lords, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, you have our undying fealty. To our knights of the round table, Nate, that one guy, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, ants are still running the world. Coulter Smith, Tom Grow, Val 9000, Jenna Tal, Quiet 185, Anna Loves Riley, Riley and Anna, Omni, Poodle Hawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophojack, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, 
Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We shall meet you in the tavern, and we raise a drink, and we salute you. <laughs>